legal and institutional frameworks that govern our own internal debt management. How robust are those legal and regulatory frameworks and to what extent do we actually implement it? So in our report, we found that some countries have really great legal frameworks. Zimbabwe, brilliant. In fact, it's one of the best in the world. The implementation is very different. So if we can really develop and implement global standard legal and regulatory debt frameworks, that's step number one. Step number two is really ensuring that we are coordinating the money we are borrowing with public investments, okay? So we borrow and we have public development plans. So if we're going to borrow for an infrastructure program, it doesn't make sense to do a debt framework that we have to pay back in six years. We, we're not going to get the return on it. It's a risk, okay? So with, to what extent is our borrowing really aligned to our long-term or short-term development plans? And are we using the right debt instruments for that borrowing? And then the third one is who is actually holding us to account? Who is holding ministers to finance to account when they say we are going to borrow for X. Where is the parliamentary oversight? Where is the robustness in our governance structures? So for me, the first thing we need to do is to put those systems in place. If we can do it and we can implement it, okay, that's step number one. Step number two is um, in my dream world, in 40 years time, we would not just have borrowed, but we would have invested that borrowing wisely. And I can't remember whether it was Dr. Morsi who said it or um, Ambassador Muchanga. But if you look at debt effectiveness on the continent or debt investment effectiveness, it ranges from everything from 10% in Nigeria to 100% in Rwanda. So if you borrow in and you're only spending 10% of that money effectively, what are you actually leaving for your children? Your children are going to pay for that debt someday, and your grandchildren, but you've only spent 10% of it effectively. So we should strive to ensure that we are all hovering around the 80 to 100% effective utilization of debt. That will be objective number two. Objective number three is that we actually have, you know, a network of African MDBs that are driving our agenda on the continent. And organizations like ALSF is actually funded by African governments. I was a bit surprised when you listed who was funding your booklets and your training, and I was like, hmm, why are we not funding these institutions if we really want them to be independent and drive our debt agenda. I'd like to see these institutions do that. I'd like us to have a, an African financial framework that has a liquidity sustainability framework that enables us to get over liquidity issues before they become a crisis for us. I'd like us to have a, an African financial framework that is effectively capitalized by our governments. And then, we all talk about debt as if it's a bad thing. Debt is not a bad thing. How many of us borrow? We all borrow. We all have mortgages. We've all borrowed for something. It's about what you spend the money on. So, in 40 years' time, we would have borrowed wisely. We would have invested in economic transformation on the continent. Okay. We would have diversified our economy, so we are not dependent on a handful of commodities that throws us in a debt crisis every time there's a global commodity crisis or something like that. We would be export competitive. We will actually be trading and developing and working with each other. And actually, we will be so strong that we won't be begging for a voice at the, you know, in the global financial architecture because like big countries today, if you're not at the table, it's actually difficult to get anything done. So we will have to be at the table 
and we will be invited to the table because we will have very big economies. Um, and Hanan, we will not be showing the potential of our children. Our children will be sitting at that table negotiating for us. But we need steps one, two, and three to happen for our children and our grandchildren not to be sitting in this room in precisely 40 years' time.